Hello to all my friends out there. I hope everyone is doing okay. I got a parking place in the shade, so that was nice. It's sunny. Uh, we're expecting rain a couple days. So, um, the city council of San Diego has agreed to use the San Diego Convention Center to have house children seeking asylum remember those children in texas um some of thousands unaccompanied minors uh they're working with the federal government so now these children that were in texas on one side of the country are now in san diego this is a long ways from texas and I'm thinking, is it possible that these people that left the children had intentions of never getting the children back, of just abandoning the children at the border? Because now that the children are in San Diego, they're a long ways from Texas. I, I figured that was a bad idea when it happened. And I couldn't really imagine uh, anyone doing that. But I told you guys a story. It wasn't a story. My my customer, I can kind of see how this would happen. My customer was a young girl and she went to Mexico. There was a polygamy co uh, compound down there. And they started falling on hard times and the husband came up to America to work and she stayed down with uh, her little girl. And one day a man came up to her and said, your daughter is starving. They were literally starving. And so um, he gave her a bag of beans, a bag of rice. He gave her some vegetables and told her to plant a garden. And she did and they survived. And there was like these, she had a lot of hellacious stories uh, you guys, if it gets bad here, don't go to Mexico. Go to Canada. What, we, what we're going to be having, I think, is maybe some worldwide famines and, you know, various disasters. So what we had here in San Diego was we had street people hit by a man. They were under the bridge, but they were little more than children themselves. Uh, that was what was so bad about it. They were young adults. You know, not quite adults, you know? And um, for some reason, people think, you know, we're just like rich in San Diego. This is the most expensive place to live that you can ever imagine. Most of us, uh, I lived here all my life. I worked two and three jobs just to survive here. So, um, and, and, and a lot of Californians are getting pissed off about this kind of stuff. The taxes just keep going up and up. Now, so that's what happened to some of those children. I, I don't know what possessed them to take children from Texas to... I don't know. Okay, so now I heard something on the internet. So you know how uh, reliable that might be like unreliable right it has been postulated when you figure everything out you figure all the inflation all this like pandemic stuff and everything that the economy has actually already been rolled back we've gone backwards not forwards to the 1970s and so I was thinking about this and I thought, hmm, you know, now, now I'm old. So I was, I was in college in the 1970s. What happened to us is a couple things. My uh, mom inherited some money, so the house was paid for. Uh, my dad started working too, not at that time, but my dad... Got a guy wandering around out here. My dad was, uh, there is street people all over the place. It's horrible. Uh, my dad was working two jobs. So it was a little bit atypical. 
um, and and we were Mormons, so basically everything we did was within the confines of the Mormon Church, and they at that time probably still are a bit separatists. So anyway, I thought about the 1970s, and I remember I went to this um, small college, and one of the first things one of the teachers said is the first thing to go is college. And um, I, I thought, yeah, I can see that here with this situation. I mean, just imagine I'm hearing tales of people being cast out of their um, apartments, you know, and there's all this homelessness and stuff. So um, I started thinking about the 70s. And I thought, yeah, you know, this does kind of remind me of the 70s, kind of. Nobody had much credit. The standard of living, uh, the standard, a lot of people deny, but the standard of living is higher than it was back then. Um, the general standard of living could go backwards, too. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing everything I can to protect the standard of living I have everything. I'm being as cheap as I can. I'm doing everything as cheap as I can. And so, um, in the 1970s was when I first started doing, uh, hairdressing. And, um, and I would work, I could always find a job and I would work and, and it just cost very little to survive back then. I could, uh, we would go to Arby's or um, Taco Bell and a taco was night, a sandwich was about 19 cents. I would stay, save my tips for a, a, a week and it would be like three bucks. I mean, it, you know, they're just, there wasn't that much uh, actual leftover cash. Um, I guess we adjusted. Personally, I don't really like the idea of going back to the 70s. I, I'm protecting my credit with my life. Uh, I think that was one of the major, this this thing of drop all, pay off all your credit and drop all your credit and uh, save cash is a good idea, but uh, not dropping all your credit. I don't think that's a good idea. But um, during the Depression, one of the things that happened is people started buying stuff on, on credit and they couldn't, couldn't pay for their credit. So that was not good. So I'm going to be thinking about this. I'm going to be thinking about what I did in the 1970s and, you know, try to uh, combine that with now. So you figure all the inflation, so the lower class and at that time, almost everybody could buy a house, pretty much. I don't know if that, I think that might be true, maybe not in San Diego. My son just bought a house in San Diego, though. It was a bit of a hassle, though. During some of these uh, recessions, the interest rate would go really high, too. That's also another aspect of inflation. When the price goes down, when things deflate, the interest goes up and that slows spending like crazy. These lockdowns and all this kind of stuff has slowed spending as well. Okay, so now this is why I started the survival meals. So what I'm trying to do is just survive this and you know get through this period. It's probably a recession without losing my you know what so last night i did the top ramen meal and i'm going to be trying to come up with another reason for doing these survival meals is if like in our family you know the pioneers our provisions ran low what that means starvation so uh that's why we stockpile and so the top ramen, the first survival meal was the top ramen meal. Actually, you guys, that was one of my better survival meals. And then, you know, I'll be uh, doing more uh, videos on stockpiling. So I told you guys about this. I got one more thing. I told you guys about this. 
if you guys have any comments on the 1970s so um i i graduated 1973 so i've been through the 70s the 80s the 90s 2010 and 20. there's advantages to being old so if you guys have any input on the 70s uh if you can leave it for me and the followers that would be great because it's very very helpful it just occurred to me that there's been like a rollback. And so, well, okay. The lap, I think I made mention of it last night. Simply Sarah, homestyle cooking, something like that. I have the worst memory. Uh, she had on there, um, it was potato gravy. Okay, so for me, I think one of the things, if you stockpile milk, and you have meat fat, but what if you don't have any meat? So last night when I was making, I was, let me give you this cornmeal. This is what started it. She made some hoe cakes. Well, I made some waffles and I made them into pancakes and I used cornmeal. Cornmeal is really, never forget that story about the lady starving. She wasn't a lady starving in uh, Mexico, literally. So I guess if the people were starving, that might motivate them to leave their children. She had a lot of faith in God, uh, of course, being a Mormon, and she prayed to God, not saying that it was good because it wasn't. What she did... The medical down there was horrible, too. I'll tell you one more thing she told me. Her little girl got really sick, like sick unto death. And they went to the hospital, and, and she said, my daughter is so sick. They said, well, you have to give us $20. She goes, I don't have any money. And they said, well, we're not taking her if you don't give us any money. And a, um, a nun, a foreign nun from France went with her. And they went out and she goes, we can't leave. If we leave, my daughter is going to die. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. She couldn't take the daughter in because they wouldn't take her without $20. She couldn't go home because the, the daughter was definitely going to die. And after a long time, the nun said, perhaps we should go. And she said, no, if we take her home, she's going to die. And so they prayed and prayed and prayed and what came was like a whirlwind, like a little tornado and dropped $20 at her feet. So I want you guys, uh, it may, it may happen that we have to, uh, we have to exercise faith, you know, in this, if times start getting really, uh, really, I'm still trying to find that. <laughs> If things get really, really crappy, and uh, my common sense tells me, uh, since the president told us dark days are coming, well, I can't find that. Why can't I find that? It's been in every video for the last darn week. Well, tonight, so anyway, back to the potato gravy. I thought last night I was making sweet potatoes and I thought, why can't I make some sweet potato gravy? So now her potato gravy was like the way I make potato soup, but she cooked the potatoes with milk. But tonight I'm going to try to make this with sweet potatoes. I'm going to use my own method and, and conjure up some gravy because if there isn't any meat, we're gonna to have to survive on more of a, a vegetable diet. So uh, I always tell my son, if you ever have to eat uh, beans, make sure you have potatoes. Potatoes, rice, and beans. So you get a varied diet. So tonight I'm gonna to be making another survival meal. And you guys, don't, don't spend any money be very careful with your money. Say to, say to yourself, there is every indication of a recession. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all.